welcome, welcome, welcome. And we are focusing on balance today. So um, often we think of yoga as just pulling out your mat and there's your yoga class. But actually yoga is everything that happens in your outside life as well. But how can we think of what's going on in the mat and how can we relate that to what's going on in the outside world? So today we're going to be focusing on balance and specifically tree pose, which is a great pose for just uh, focusing on nothing else but trying not to fall over. <laughs> but also, um, it's a nice way to find if there's imbalances in the body. When there's imbalance in the body, there's something in the outside world that is causing the imbalance in the body. So perhaps it's your job, maybe there's um, like anatomically, like physically speaking, um, maybe it's the way you sit at your desk, maybe it's daily habits like always walking your dog on one side. But if you come more into the emotional, mental, spiritual side of it, it's like how is lack of balance affecting your life and how can you start to make small changes? Again, everything is about small changes. The, the way uh, people try to make changes is these huge changes. And some people, like A-type people, can probably make those changes by doing big changes. But most of us have a busy life. Uh, we got off track quite quickly. So small changes, small habits, they're easier to keep. But in the long run, if you keep putting a brick onto a wall every single day, eventually you're going to have a great big wall. So these are just little pebbles in that um, journey. So what in your outside life is not balanced, maybe it's relationships, maybe it's your work home life balance, maybe it's your alcohol intake versus your water intake, maybe it's your self-care versus giving to others. Where, what in your life is in, unbalanced and how can you bring balance back to that? And we're going to focus on chair, uh, on tree pose specifically today, uh, just to connect the two together. Um, in previous videos, I've spoken about Tadasana feet. So Tadasana feet or mountain pose is, um, mountain pose feet, should I say, is the foundation of all standing poses. It's a very important position for the foot and can often be neglected um, when teaching. So uh, what I want you to focus on when you're in your balance is what is happening with the foot. If the foot wants to roll out, um, that's going to affect your balance, but you'll probably feel it in the ankles. It's a bit of ankle, um, lack of ankle strength. Um, so you want to try and direct your weight into the ball of the foot if you find that your ankle's rolling a little bit. So to Dvasana feet, to Dvasana feet, if you spread your toes, almost like you're trying to make the sole of your foot wider. So I like to lift the toes, lift the side of the foot, and then try and spread it and put it back down. And then lift your heels and try and send your heels further back down the mat. So your foot is wider and it's longer. So now you've created this bigger surface area that connects to the ground. And then if you engage your toes, just gently, like, I want to say push your toes into the floor, but just engage your toes into the mat and you'll feel the arches suck up a little bit. They lift a little bit. So now, if I had to walk up to you and push you, you wouldn't fall over. You have this big connection with the ground, rather than if you were just nice and relaxed, you'd fall over. Okay, so there's this um, real grip on the ground, so to speak. Now, with the balance, I want you to choose your better balancing leg. Um, so it might be your left, might be your right. Um, I've had a few injuries on ankles falling downstairs, sober, I might add and falling in holes on, while I'm out hiking. Um, so I think today I'm going to choose my left leg. <laughs> uh, that will feel stronger today. So again, all of this impacts you. This happened like five years ago and it still affects uh, my ankles. We always think an injury, once an injury is gone, it's gone. It's, it, it hides itself in your body. Now, when you come into a balance, be aware, whatever leg you're supporting yourself on, that you don't pop that hip out. So squeeze your bum cheeks and try and bring that hip so it's in alignment with the knee. And I'm not going to go in for the big tree today. If you want to do the big tree, I will show you how to do it. Uh, sometimes smaller movements are superior. So from there, maybe this is your tree, just holding that balance so the foot is light on the floor. 
Have your supporting leg slightly bent. It's going to make your muscles work rather than just locking out that knee joint and you sit in the joint. So it's healthier for the joint if you just have that knee slightly bent. Or you can even put your foot onto the other foot. Your hands can be on your hips. You can put your hands on your chest. You can send your hands out to the side. Whatever's going to help your balance. We're trying to find balance. Whatever you need to do to find your balance. From there, if you want to go a little bit deeper, you can go a little bit deeper. The only place you don't want to put your foot is across that knee joint because it's going to push your knee that way. And our knees don't bend laterally. They don't bend sideways. Okay, So you don't want to do that with the knee. So you either go below the knee joint or... You can come above the knee joint. And if you do take your legs that high, if you push your supporting leg into the foot and your foot into the supporting leg, it will help you to stay there. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Pulling my pants down. I'm sure you don't want to see my knickers. So I'm just going to stay with the baby one. So let's go for it. Bum is active, supporting knees nice and soft, and whatever variation you're going to choose. Now, I quite like this position because I actively have to hold my leg there. When I do a high one, I find I can just sit in that position. Uh, so this is, to me, making my legs work a bit harder. So I'm just going to have my hands on my um, hips. And my leg is already burning. I've done quite a bit this morning. But as you come into your balance, I want you to pay attention to what is that foot doing. Now, if you've got, you stay in your balance, don't come out of it. If you've got bunions or anything like that, it's going to affect your balance. So if you need to just have your hand against the wall just to, to help you balance a little bit, do that. Lengthen your spine up towards the ceiling. That supporting leg stays soft. Be aware you don't just uh, lock it out because it is uh, easier. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you wobble, it's only yoga. It's not life or death. So just notice how you are actually talking to yourself if you do find you wobble. Sometimes I see clients, you can see in their face they're getting really angry. So find the balance, whatever you need to do. Engage your bum cheek a little bit more. Draw the abdominals in more. Maybe use your hands. Two more breaths. Really focus on that foot. And then release. Oh, I should do more trees. My poor little ankles. <laughs> Everyone thinks Pilates and yoga teachers have this perfect anatomy, but we also struggle with stuff. Uh, so we're going to come into what I would say your weaker balancing side or your less better balancing side. I don't like to use the term weaker. We just have natural imbalances in the body. Spread your toes. As you bring the weight into the supporting leg, make sure that your bum is working so you're not just dropping out. If you find that quite challenging, that may indicate that your glutes are weak. Uh, so you just want to squeeze your bum. Okay, so all of a sudden trying to bring the hip off of that thigh bone. And then you can be there. You can be there. Anywhere where you were, just not across the knee. Now, ideally, you want to take that knee out if you can. But if you have tightness in your hips here, if you feel very restricted, the more you try and pull that knee out, I'm going to exaggerate, so the hip will swing round. And then you're putting... Um, strain on the cruciate ligament so you don't want to do that rather just have the knee over there as long as you're trying to send it out from there and not the pelvis so grow nice and tall again let's just settle into it supporting knee is soft surprisingly this one is a little bit more stable today and you will change some days one side's better than the other so this ankle, I fell into a bog on Dartmoor. And a bog, if you don't know what it is, is a big hole hidden by slushy grass. <laughs> and everyone laughed. <laughs> so find the balance. Whatever you need to do to get your balance. If there's a spot on the wall, not a fly, find something that's staying there and just focus on that. 
Can you lengthen a little bit more? Maybe draw the abdominals in. Will that help you? Find your balance. I can feel myself dropping out of that hip. Two more breaths. Notice how your ankle's trying to support you. And then, release. <laughs> like I said, so, so you could have hurt yourself 10 years ago and been completely fine. And then as you get older, me and Paul, Paul and I were talking about the other day, all of a sudden you wake up one day and all these old injuries just come back to haunt you. So be kind to your body. Just, you know, um, as a teacher, people always think that you have to be perfect at everything and, um, you know, you should be able to perform and your body's in perfect condition. We also have all of our own injuries that we have to deal with. So those are mine. <laughs> Take care, guys. Find your balance. How are you going to bring balance to your life? Um, and enjoy that little exercise. So I'll see you soon.